Brian says, I want to build a stove in my basement, but only to use as a backup or in fall and spring. Is it going to be worth the build effort or just buy a regular stove? Well, that's a great question, Brian. That's a really good question. And actually, um, <clears throat> you know, that really sort of brings me to kind of one of my fundamental tenets of rocket stove building. Um, and that is that, you know, I feel like, and I think most of the folks here are going to back me up on this. Um, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm kind of having a difficult time formulating how to convey it. But really what the way I look at even a single stove build, but the stoves in general, and, and especially as a, as a do-it-yourselfer, um, they're really a journey. <laughs> I sort of hate to use that word. It's kind of cheesy. But um, there's a progression to them. And there are, while there are people that build a stove once and then don't touch it again, and that's really what my intention with you know, creating plans was to give folks hope of, of getting one that works right out of the gate. Um, but while mo while a lot of people do do just build a stove and then leave it, I think that that's probably in a, a large part the minority of people who build stoves. I think people who build these stoves, do-it-yourselfers who build stoves, if you're anything like me, you know, you just get sort of captured by you know the fascination with these stoves um with all of the potential possibilities that the build you know suggests to you as you start to understand it more and as you start to play with the build and really what i'm trying to say is it's really fun to build these things um it starts out seeming kind of overwhelming and it seems like a giant chore uh but once you have a pile of bricks and some mortar and you kind of you know you've got your core figured out and then you start to play with the bricks and stack them up. It's really addictive. And you really, you know, you might build the first one right to my plans, but then you might, you know, use it for a little while and have inspiration from your own goals and say, well, geez, I wish it made heat over here or quicker or slower, or, you know, I'd like to use it for this function. Um, but at any rate, I think that <clears throat> there isn't really a short, easy answer to your question. I mean, I, obviously, I think, yes, it's worth it to do it. Uh, there's a lot to unpack there. You know, how difficult is it to get a, a chimney in there? Um, you know, how hard is it to really undertake this project? But if it's not going to upend your entire life, and if you can have a project going there for a little while, it sounds like it's in your basement, and perhaps that's somewhere you don't use all the time, I think it's, I think you'd really, really, really enjoy it. And I will tell you right now, I know that when you needed it, you would love it. Um, so with that said, let's examine that a little bit more. Um, you know, is, you know, the question of just throwing a box stove down there, a regular stove, which it sounds like you might do in, as the alternative. <clears throat> to be honest with you, I think that any reasonable box stove unless you just don't care you're just going to get a junker for a hundred or a couple hundred bucks from the you know from the scrapyard and it's going to burn really dirty and be probably kind of difficult to uh, to operate from the basement um but so what i'm getting at here is you're kind of gonna have to spend some money on a good box stove if you go the box stove route and you'll need a chimney either way so um i kind of feel like the rocket mass heater especially something fun like a brick batch box or something like that you know they're really not that much work once you source all the parts um you you have your bricks on hand it might take you a long weekend or, or three or four days to stack up those bricks um but in that process you will gain so much knowledge and i feel pretty confident you'd be inspired to just you know to, to really keep going and get into it and take it you know as far as you could um so as Belgian Gold say, Belgian Gold says it's a labor of love, and Tall Shadow says the experience alone was well worth it for me. So, you know, we're all sort of of the same breed here, and I, I think any of us here are gonna, you know, encourage you, um, and probably say, yeah, I think you'd really, you'd really dig it. Um, 
So it's really just a question of, of, you know, really what your goals are and really what you're about and what kind of person you are and what you're really looking for. Um, if you, you're obviously here, you must, you know, you, you must have your interest piqued by rocket stoves. They must seem cool. And I think for a lot of us, that's enough right there is just to burn these things. And then once you start burning them, as you can tell, most of us who've been doing this, been doing it, have been doing it for a little while. And you'll find that most of us don't just build one stove and, and go away. Most of us kind of get hooked. And the reason for that is, is they're just they're so cool. They're so inspiring in so many ways. You know, whether it's the fact that it's burning totally smokeless, you know, you, that you can, you can groove on that for a while when you've been used to having regular fires and now you're having fires and you go outside and you're like, yeah, I can't even believe it. You can't tell it's burning. And here's Jeremiah, uh, one of my, one of my most prolific builders, Jeremiah Shine. You guys, if you haven't checked out his channel, he's got some great builds going back a long ways to my original uh, full cook stove and uh and he's another great example brian of those of us who've like built a stove to serve a purpose and then kind of gotten hooked and and torn them apart and built them again and built them for friends and built second ones and third ones so i think you'd probably really dig it um and then we go into things like fred says which fred says also the wood consumption would be less so that's just it is once you start to use one you know you go through the the work of of building your first one and then you start to use it and it it's pretty addictive because they're so efficient they're so warm they're such a pleasure to use and to be around um you know you really start to question at least for me i start to question kind of how we got where we are in our sort of um you know wood burning culture that box stoves are kind of the only for them for most people they're really the only reasonable choice or at least in the mainstream um and so you know once you have that masonry stove you kind of your kind of eyes open up and um yeah it's just it's really really rewarding i guess is what it comes down to so you know if you just want to get the project done with and put it behind you and you're not afraid of spending some money maybe a box stove is is the thing to do but i think if you want to explore a little bit and have some fun with it I think you'd really enjoy the build. I know it would work well for you in that um, situation as a backup stove, as, as supplemental heat. They're wonderful for supplemental heat. You know, if you're, if you're, uh, how can I say this the right way? Um, you know, I often discourage people from trying to put one of these uh, as the sole heat source in a situation where they're not sure if it's going to cut it or not, because they're just not... They, they run fine wide open and blasting all that heat out um but they're just such a joy to run sort of at a at a slow steady pace um and so yeah i think as a as supplemental backup heat in your space i think you'd be just really really pleased with the way it worked out so uh that was a long answer to a relatively short question but uh